Okay, so um, this is a PowerPoint for ELA for three through five, and its focus is on our resource that we're using, expeditionary learning. So what I told to the teachers is, for the grades that are heavy on expeditionary learning, you can really take a lot of this information and use it to your advantage. And the grades that are kind of using expeditionary learning as a hybrid, I still think it's valuable because you'll be able to see how expeditionary learning progresses within a module. Um, so the first thing that I did when I did this PowerPoint is I just made, wanted to see where my teachers were um, in the literacy process. Um, and explain to them that this is about what's happening this year and the resource. Um, our agenda today, I put the agenda up like this because I explained to my teachers that when I teach expeditionary learning, because the lesson is so, um, there's so much in the lesson, I always put a literacy agenda up. And so this agenda is kind of an exemplar of what um, a literacy agenda might look like. Um, just so you can keep track of your time and I always put like the minutes and everything like that So this is our agenda, but just keep in mind that when you teach expeditionary learning It might be to your advantage to put up an actual literacy agenda The other thing that I always put up in expeditionary learning was the learning targets for the kids So I put up our the learning targets for today So today we were going to explain what an effective literacy block looks like with regards to the shifts in the district and Wyoming standards and today um, I can have a clear understanding of the foundation of expeditionary learning and I can have a general sense of what my first module in expeditionary learning is about and then I this is what we did with the teachers and then what I would do with the kids is I would say okay are there any words that stick out to you and why might those words stick out to you just so they really understand and then the other thing I said was in expeditionary learning, there are typically only two to three learning targets because they don't want the kid. They want the kids to hone in on these specific things, and they don't want to make it a ton. So um, I just re-explained to the teachers that we're adjusting to the Wyoming state standards using the curriculum map, which is found on Google Docs, um, Atlas Rubicon, which you can easily access through TCSD. You just type in your name and pa password. And then when you want to look at what your grade's doing, you type in um, elementary, the grade level, and the subject. And then this is the resource that 3.5 is using along with the map in Common Core. And this is a website that you can easily access to get expeditionary learning. Um, you can find it on Engage New York, but I wouldn't encourage you to do that just because Engage New York has kind of changed a little bit of what expeditionary learning does with their ELA unit. Um, when you, what I said to my teachers is when you're doing a literacy block, you need to give yourself about 100 to 110 minutes for the block. Expeditionary learning, all the lessons are supposed to be 60 minutes. Then outside of that, you're supposed to have a 30 minute guided reading, shared reading, independent reading. And then outside of that, you're supposed to have 15 minutes of word work. So it comes in to be about 105 minutes. So you can have a little wiggle room. So what is expeditionary learning? It's based on backwards design. Um, it's a guide um, for teachers to help students effectively engage and master the um, CCSS standards. And it also address, addresses the shifts. It's designed for teachers by teachers. Um, their expeditionary learning is based on thematic units with storylines. There are four modules within a year. Each module is supposed to be eight weeks per one module. There are three units within a module, um, and the units are both fiction and nonfiction, and each module has about 34 to 40 lessons. So that's a lot. Um, there are seven assessments. So if you look at this little thing, in module one, in unit one you have two assessments, in unit two you have two assessments, in unit three you have two assessments and a performance task. So this is kind of it looking, looking at it throughout the year. Um, so it's a lot, and what I said to my teachers yesterday was they kind of, their eyes got big with 34 to 40 lessons. It's okay if you spend two days on one lesson. It's a lot to take in just like Engage New York is. So they're gonna find that there's a lot in the lesson, and um, for the first year, definitely just take your time with the lesson. Things to think about when you're teaching it is the lesson is supposed to be taught, it's not meant to be um, scripted, but it's very much so. The only, it's really supposed to be a guide. So 
because it's so detailed, it's really meant to help the teachers get a visual of how the lesson unfolds rather than be a script. Um, some students are going to require more wait time with a lesson while others may not. It's, and so with that, you should modify your lessons based on your student, school, and district need. And um, as you're working, particularly third grade, I know, um, what we want you to do is teach a lesson, take notes in the lesson, go into Atlas, say what's working, what's not. We had a teacher yesterday say, um, I think we needed this learning target in this too. So I said, great, add it, put it in Atlas. So that, that was good. Um, so that within each module, like I said, there are three units. The first unit engages the reader and helps build background knowledge to understand the so what. The unit two digs deeper to find out more about um, the reading topic you're working on. And unit three requ requires students to apply their learning to create an authentic product in a performance task. Um, and then here's an example. I did third grade because third grade is using ex heavy on expeditionary learning. So in their module one, unit one, the skill that they're working on is close reading. And they're supposed to examine the main message in literature about individuals and groups from world communities who have gone to great lengths to access education. Um, they identify the central message and they take notes in the provided categories. That's what's happening in unit one. And unit two, the focus is more on being proficient and independent. And so they're reading literature about characters who are motivated to learn to read. And um, they're also accessing their own strengths as readers. They're setting goals um, about becoming proficient and independent readers. And they're becoming reading superpowers. That's kind of the theme in third grade. And this unit is heavy on reading fluency. So that's unit two. And then the last unit is where you have that performance task. It's the longest in this module. It delves into geography and how where one lives in the world impacts how one accesses books. You continue building your knowledge and vocabulary related to world geography. Um, this is the focus, the book, My li Librarian is a Camel. Um, so you apply your learning, and so the performance tax is you pr apply their learning by writing a simple information report about how people access books around the world, focusing on the role of specific librarians or organizations they've studied. And then the, f the writing is in the form of a bookmark, which students can then give to their school or local library. And that's the performance task that they assess. Um, so when you get a module, What's in the module? You have your module overview, which is a synopsis of what's going to happen in the module. You have an assessment overview of each assessment. Um, you have an overview of the performance task. And then you have this recommended text list, which is not meant for you to order all of these books. It just says if you're going to teach this module, these are books that have a common theme. And it's a variety of Lexile levels. They have also unit overviews that are specific to each unit you teach. And then they have the lessons with the supporting materials, 34 to 40. Um, when you think about planning a module, um, the first thing we did yesterday is you, we, we wanted to just look at the module overview. And we looked at um, what is the module mostly about? What is their performance task? How, how will students be asked to synthesize and show their learning? Um, what is the anchor text that they're supposed to be using? And then we skimmed the week at a glance. And that's what we did yesterday. And then our next steps, um, which is kind of what the next steps, um, let me just see. I want to go to this real quick. We're going to continue to analyze the module. So we'll look at, now that we've looked at the module, now we're going to analyze each unit. And then we're going to dive into the specifics of the lessons, knowing that teachers are already doing that. Um, and then we're going to continue to edit it. Um, here's some helpful hints when I said you're teaching. Really, it's helpful to put up the agenda for literacy. I know we put up the agenda for the day, but the agenda for literacy. And the learning, tar learning targets should always be on the board. And remember that you don't need to teach a lesson this year in one day, because it's a lot. And then the last thing I did with my teachers is I, re I put up these learning targets again to show my teachers that at the end of the lesson, you would have some sort of exit ticket or you'd hit these learning targets again and check for understanding. You know, thumbs up, fist of five, or an exit ticket. So that's it.